recording. Oh, thanks. So, uh, we finished up talking last time about the algorithm analysis, but I wanted to go back over the comparison of the linked and the array stacks. Because last time, I think people were kind of just like jumping to an answer without thinking about it. So let's make sure we're doing this right. So I have a linked stack of some arbitrary size. Its length is n, OK? And I want to pop from that linked stack. And here's the instructions for popping from a linked stack. We get the data from the top element. We say top, OK, you now reference tops next. We decrease the size and return the element. What is the computational complexity? What is the big O of popping from a linked stack? Got to throw it in the chat there. One. There we go. Now let's talk about popping from an array stack. Let's look at the instructions. Decrease top by one, OK. Get the data from stack at index top, which is always the, the one before top, so that's why we decreased before, I guess. Set stack at top to null, return the element. What's the computational complexity of popping from an array stack? One. Good. <clears throat> uh, now push. Push on a link stack. Let's look at the steps. Create a new node with the element in it. Say uh, to push, your next is the top, like the old top, and then immediately set top to the thing that we're pushing, right? Because it's now the new top. And then increase size. What's the comp computational complexity of all of this? One. Very good. And lastly, We've got a bit of a pickle here, right? Because let's ignore this part for a second, the top equals stack dot length. Let's, let's ignore that for a second. If I'm pushing onto an array stack, what's the computational complexity pretending our array is infinite length? All I say is stack at index top equals the element and then top plus plus. What's the computational complexity of this chunk right there? It's one. That's good. It is one. But the problem is, if I have an array of length n, let's say, I get n, I can do n pushes in constant time. So for example, let's say n is 100. I can push on that stack 100 times. And the, of every time in that 100 times, I, it only takes me constant time which is fantastic, but that next time I need to push, I run into an issue. I'm out of space in my array. So I need to call expand capacity. So what is the computational complexity of expand capacity of this whole method right here? Well, create a new array. Okay, it is n, that's good, but let's talk about it. So we create a new array, array of size length times two. Okay, great. And then we got this part here, the for loop, for i from 0 to the length of the stack. And here the length of the stack is our n, right? So I need to go and put my finger on each thing in the old stack and copy the reference over to the new stack. And I got to do that for each thing in that array, all n things. In our case, n is 100, so all 100 things. And then we just update what stack points to. So this part right here is the troublemaker. But it's kind of interesting. So like a, a very simple, naive, for lack of a better term, and, and, a, and an answer that would be entirely acceptable at the end of 162 for you to say is, well, what's the computational complexity of push? Because, you know, we always like to think about worst case scenario. We would say, well, it's, it's linear because this whole expand capacity thing. But in reality, if we want to get a little bit more sophisticated, we would say like, well, yeah, but the expand capacity is called so rarely that it doesn't really matter. How much, how much work is it? Like, let me put it this way. If I have a stack of size 100, I can push 
100 things in constant time, right? I get 100 order one operations. But then on that next time, I have to do this, this expand capacity. I have to do one order n operation. So, you know, I get, I get n order one things and then one order n things. What if I kind of just like pretend all of that work is kind of just like spread out over the previous 100 pushes? Then each of those would be like, oh, order two, which isn't a thing. So I, you know, I could be like, well, you know, it's amortize, if we amortize the work, and amortize is like a fancy word to just say like, spread it out over a chunk of time. If we amortize that work, we would, we could still get away with saying like, well, amorti with amortization, this is like still constant time. But that's a little bit advanced. So for the, for our purposes right now, I would look at this and be like, yeah, it's, it's linear because it's expand capacity. Now, if you had to choose, though, this is what we were ending with. If you had to choose on your computer, if you're writing your code, if you had to choose which implementation you would pick based on the computational complexity, would you pick the linked R or the array stack implementation? What would you pick and why? Well, two people said linked. Only two people have an opinion on this. Linked because I love linked because it's, I, I'm guessing that meant linked. Um, yeah. Uh, because no expand capacity. Yeah. So you would, you would think like, well, okay, so sure. Even with that whole amortization thing, there's still that, that linear time thing that the linked implementation doesn't need. And you're totally right. Based on the computation involved, You've got a good point. The link structure seems to make a lot of sense. However, in practice, the array version is going to be so much faster than the linked version. You might be wondering, what? Like, how does that make any sense? Well, the reason though, and I want to be very clear. Listen up. I want to be very clear. Based on the computation required here, it's reasonable to say linked. But as a consequence of how these computing, I don't know if you hear me knocking my computer, but all of these computing machines that we use, all of the computing devices we typically use and how they are engineered and how they are designed to work based on the architecture of how, just all the engineering that goes into them, the arrays end up being faster, but that's actually not a consequence of the pure computation of like the mathematics of it. It's a consequence of like how these systems operate, how this computation system operates. So sometimes it's interesting because we can talk about all this theory mathematically, but then when it comes to practice, like in practice, well, it'll depend on the computing machine you're using. And I mean, most of the time we're using like computers. So there's that. This type of trivia is not something you're going to like, this is not on the test type thing, right? Like this is the type of trivia that you just kind of know and you're like, well, okay. Now, if you're asking, well, what's the point of learning the link structure? Well, the point of learning the link structure is there's going to be a lot of cases where link structures are definitely handy. Uh, and two, the, it's all about the data structures, the manipulation and working with different types of data structures. So keep in mind, this is computer science, not engineering. And for those of you that are the engineers, sorry, but it's computer science and not the engineering. You'll get more engineering later. Any questions about any of that though? All right, if you have a question, type in the chat, but I'll, uh, I'll just move on to the next topic, which is cues. All right, so. Cues. I feel like the engineers are more than okay with a little break from it. <laughs> okay. Um, cues are a collection of elements where things are added to one end and things are removed from the other end. So with the stack, all of the adding and removing happen from one end, right? The top, you'd push things on and then you'd pop things off the stack. 
With a queue, it's different. You have things showing up and then things leaving at the, at the other end. Have you ever stood in a line at Tim Hortons or anything ever in your life? Of course, it doesn't need to be Tim Hortons. Have you ever stood in a line ever in your life? Raise your hand if you have. And if you don't raise your hand, you're lying, because of course you have. So, from the looks of it, you are all very familiar with what a queue is. <laughs> That's a queue. That, that is the idea right there. You add things to the queue, they go to one end. When you remove, they come out from the other end. The first one there is the first one served. That's the queue. First in, first out. There are queues used everywhere. In real life, and you know, in computing. But, okay. Here we go, here's the front of a queue. Here's people standing in line. I don't know, maybe they're gonna go on a roller coaster. If someone wants to add to the queue, well, they go to the end. Like, boop, there, they're added. If you want to remove, okay, well, they, you know, the, the screen guy is now gone because they're now out of the queue. That's it. Okay, with the queue, like other collections, well, like the only other one we've really played with so far in detail is the stack, we need a way to add things and remove things. And we like that ability to kind of like have a look at the, to have a look at the, the, like the next thing to come, but still leave it in there, you know? So we want to be able to add, remove, and look at things. So the stack, the add was push. Remove was pop and look was peak. With, within the queue, we're going to use the words in queue to enter the queue, DQ to leave the queue, and then first is like the peak. First is like, okay, have a look at the first thing, but leave them in the queue. And then of course, we're gonna want our like is empty size and two string. So this is it, in queue, DQ first. This is the analog to push, pop, and peak. Now, warning. If you go and you actually go look at Java's uh, queue interface, which we're gonna write our own interface, but if this is like the, um, the, the Java utils queue. So all the things that we're learning about, Java already has, but you know, our, the point of what we're doing right now is we're learning how all these things work. So if you go look at the queue interface, they actually don't use the word in queue and DQ. They use uh, like add remove or offer pull. They have slightly different meanings. So just as a heads up, if you ever go digging they're gonna, and you're wondering, wait, hold on, why is it not in queue DQ? It's because that's what they're called here. But traditionally, the queues, we use the words, like here's the Wikipedia page, uh, in queue, DQ, that's the, the words we traditionally use in general. So just as a heads up. So an example use, I hate this example. I'm not even gonna talk about this example. I hate it so much. So as an alternative example, let's, uh, let's go and uh, real quick, raise your hand if you submitted assignment two or will be submitting assignment two in a, in a moment. And leave it, leave it up, I wanna get a sense. All right, uh, copy and paint. All right, so, all right. Well, I'll do this example anyway. So in assignment two, we were, we were using a stack to solve a maze, right? So with the stack idea, we were doing something like this, right? We, okay, we start here, we go here, we go here, uh-oh, we pop. Okay, we push, we push, we push, we push, we push, we push, uh-oh, pop, 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 push, pop, push, 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 push. Oh, we're done, right? So that's the idea with the stack, is we're pushing and we're popping. Uh, ah, you're thinking too hard. So what would happen if we take this same idea, I'm just gonna move this up so we can see a little better, except instead of using a stack, we use a queue. 
Well, so with the stack, we do what we call a depth first search where we go kind of like explore all the way down a line until we get to a dead end and then we backtrack. If we use that same idea with a queue, it'll be a little bit different because if I have my queue, you know, I'll see it. I don't know how well this will go. Here, let's pretend this is my queue. This is my front, okay? So I'm going to have, I'm gonna label these things. A, B, C, no. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N. Okay, I heard a bunch of boops. What do we got here? Uh, tree Sentinel. Ignore the Tree Sentinel for now. <laughs> All right, so here's the idea. I start with the, with the start. Okay, great. I put it in my queue, then I immediately dequeue it. I look at all of my valid neighbors. I can only see D. So D gets added to the queue. Okay, great. Now, I, I, I looked at all my valid neighbors. Okay, so I'll do that with like a loop. Up, right, down, left. I dequeue the thing at the front. Okay, that's the D. I look at all my valid neighbors. Well, now I see A and F. So D is like done. And same with start. So now we add A and F. Okay, all right, well that's all the valid neighbors there, okay. So now I'm gonna look at A, okay. So now we're looking at A, and we go, okay, well A actually has no valid neighbors, so whatever. So F is now the front of the queue. A is now done. So we now dequeue F, and we go, okay, look at all of F's neighbors and add them to the queue. Well, that's only G. Okay, so we add the G, and now F is done and it's not in the queue anymore. Hmm. I'm gonna rewrite that G real quick here so it's not G there. There. Um, <clears throat> okay, and yeah, okay, F is done. Now we look at the G, we DQ the G, we look at the G, add all its neighbors. Well, there's only the H. So G is now done. Okay, great. So now, whoop. See if I can get fancy here. No, I don't know what happened there. Okay, H, okay, great. We DQ H, so really I should be actually taking H off. Uh, we DQ H, all right, and I add all of H's neighbors. So we have E, okay, so we can add our E. I can add I, and I add J, right? And now H is done. So, okay, get rid of you, and we'll mark you as done. Okay, so now we DQ. Okay, let's take the E off. Move these guys forward. And we look at E, add all of the neighbors. Well, there's only the one. There's the B. And then we're done there. Okay, now we DQ the I. Oh, let me mark. Uh, yeah, okay, E's done. Now we look at the I, add all its neighbors. Well, there are none. So, okay, I is done. We DQ the J. Okay, look at the J. Okay, add all its neighbors. Well, that's M. And the J is done. Okay, DQ the B. Oh, now we're jumping back up to the top of the maze. Okay. Um, you know, jump back up to the top of the maze. Add all of B's neighbors. Okay, well, we see C. We're done with B. Now we go in DQM. All right, M, M. So we're looking at M and we're gonna add all of M neighbors. Okay, well, we see N and L. Okay, and now M is done. We DQC. I'm just gonna move these guys up because you know they're at the front. We go and we look at C, add all of C's neighbors. Well, there are none. So, okay, well, we're done with C. Okay, and now we'll DQ N. Uh, okay, we got N. We go and we add all of N's neighbors. Well, one of N's neighbors is actually the end. Actually, that's the only 
neighbor. So I'm just going to plop that in there. Okay, and that's it for N. So we are now done with N. Okay, we now DQL. Okay. And we go and add all of L's neighbors, which is only K, so we add the K. Okay, that's done. Then we DQ the next one. Oh, that's the end. We're done. So this time, no, it's, do it's definitely not more efficient. That's for sure. It's the same. Does the order of the neighbors in the queue matter? Ah, well, you're you're going to have some sort of systematic way of saying, okay, up, right, down, left is the order I'm doing. So whenever I add the neighbors, it's first in, first out. So if I add E, I, and J, E, I, and J will come out in that order. But I mean, the fact that they went in in the order E, I, and J is dependent on the, the rules I wrote for in queuing. So I always like to do clockwise starting at 12 o'clock. So I check up, right, down, and then left, but left was already visited. So that's where the order will matter. But if you came along and wrote it where you went down, right, up, left, well, the order would be different, but you'll get the same solution in the end. Does this find every possible method? Uh, it could, it could. You could use it this way, uh, but I would just like say, okay, let's stop once we find the solution. So where, yeah, so it, you could use it to find all solutions, but you could also use the depth first search to find all solutions as well. Um, let me go back to, I'm gonna just undo, every, okay, I can't go any further. Copy. Nope. So where, where the stack, let us do this like depth first thing where we go down and then we backtrack and then, okay, we go like this. Oh, no, then we backtrack, and, no. Hey, we found it. So the depth first search will go down a path until it hits the end where the queue actually allows us to do a different type of search. The type of search we call this is a breadth first search, where instead of going all the way down and then coming back, it kind of like just spreads out in all directions. So that's why, I mean, this example wasn't great because we only really got to see that happen. Like we visited this and then 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 this so it didn't go down and back it just spread out so the queue can be used to do an entirely different style of search through a maze the maze, yeah, okay, great. Depth first search, fantastic. But there's nothing saying you couldn't do a breadth first search to find a solution. The depth first search makes a little bit more sense if you're thinking as like, if you're a human in that maze and you're walking, you're gonna go down and then come back and backtrack, right? But the computer doesn't need to do that because the computer is kind of like omnipotent and it can see the whole maze and it can just go, okay, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. Like there's no need for it to be like, like you're not in there, so you don't need to like actually physically traverse it. Anyway, so yeah, it's kind of cool. Does it find ever like, okay, how would you change a DFS to find all solutions? Uh, just keep doing it where you keep cert, like every time you find the end, you go, okay, great. And then carry on, just start backtracking. Mark everything visited except the end, I guess, cause you're gonna wanna be able to revisit the end. That's all. All right. So there's an example of the use of a queue, but you know another use of the queue? Standing in line at Tim Hortons, whatever, right? <laughs> so let's define a queue with an interface like we did with the stack, but the stack we had push, pop, peak, uh, is empty in size. Here we're gonna have in queue, DQ first, is empty and size. And you'll notice it's generic. But again, this is only the interface. This only says what, it doesn't say how. You can go and download the queue.java 
And if you do that, you'll see, let me find the right one. Come on. Uh, 102. Let's go look at the source main queue. So here's the interface you'd actually go download if you download it. It's got uh, like function headers to kind of describe which each one should be doing, which is a good thing. Um, but yeah, it's got in queue, D queue, first is empty and size. That's all. That's all we got. And that's fine. And again, this is only the interface. It says what? This is what like makes that contract where if something wants to be a queue, it has to implement all of these things. And if it doesn't, it's not a queue. You might say, well, what if I didn't make it implement the interface, but I make it do the in queue, DQ, uh, first size is empty. Well, it's still a queue. Well, okay, but then you're losing kind of the power of using the interface to kind of let Java know that if something implements this queue, it knows it's a queue and it knows it's safe to use it like a queue that we kind of talked about with the stack, how I can just say stack my stack equals a new array stack and then a billion lines of code. And then all I could go back to that one line that said stack my stack and just change it to equals link stack, suddenly boom, different implementation. Entirely different by changing half of one line of code. And it's safe to do so because as far as Java is concerned, it's a stack. An array stack is a stack. A link stack is a stack. And if I have a stack reference variable, all that matters is that it's referencing something that is a stack. Pardon me for a moment. So that's it for the queue. That's the idea. Now, of course, we're going to want to go and implement a queue because it's great to know what you can do with one, but how does it actually work? Well, let's start this time with a linked queue. Last time we started with an array stack and then we looked at the linked stack. Well, now let's look at a linked queue and then later we'll look at a, a, an array queue. So now we know what a queue is, uh, we want to implement it. So we know the what, but now we want to know the how. And we like to keep these things separate. So we need a container. We need something that's going to hold on to our data. Uh, we need a way to keep track of the front a way to keep track of the rear, and a way to know, like we're gonna to wanna to keep track of the size of our queue as well. So, you know, this is giving us a sense of maybe what, uh, what fields our class should have. Well, I already said we're gonna do a linked one, so the container's gonna be a linked queue. A way to keep track of the front, well, that's just gonna be a reference to a node. A uh, way to keep track of the rear, that's just gonna be a reference to the uh, node at the other end. And size, that's just an integer to keep track of how many things are in the queue. All right, so here's the idea. I have a queue of size four. So here's a snapshot of a queue. I have a reference to the front. I have a reference to the rear. You might say, well, when we looked at the linked stuff before, we never had this reference to the rear. We only ever had a reference to the front. Yeah, sure. We could implement a queue where we don't keep reference to the rear. But the benefit of having reference to the rear, let's think about this for a second. If I want to enqueue something, think about what the enqueue operation would be required to do. If I want to enqueue something, I can simply say, okay, rear set next to a new node. Boom, enqueued. That's one step. That's, that's a constant time operation. But if I don't have this reference to the rear and I only have reference to the front, I'm going to have to go, okay, front, get next, get next, get next, get next, get next, n times until I get to the end. And then I can say, okay, and now your next is the new one. So if I don't have reference to the rear, suddenly I have a queue where every in queue is an order n operation, a linear time operation, which is not bad, but if you have a way to implement it such that it's an, a linear time operation could be a constant time operation, do it, especially when it's as simple as just having a, another field referencing another node. Any questions about anything I just said? I'll give you a second. I kind of want to get some questions before I carry on because it gets boring just talking at a screen. No, no questions. Everyone's happy. All right. Well, if you have a question, throw it in the chat. So when queuing happens at the rear, okay, so I enqueued this uh, 
teal or green, whatever color that is. Uh, turquoise? I don't know. Uh, there. So I would be like, okay, rear, your next is this new node with the green thing in it. Okay, great. And we update size. DQing, well, it happens at the front. Get the data out, which would be this light blue thing. And then we say front equals front dot get next. Boom. Done. This is just adding, pardon me, DQing is removing from the front. Inqueuing is adding to the rear of a link structure. And if you go back to links, and you think about it in terms of like, okay, adding to the front, adding to the middle, adding to the rear, removing, 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 all of these ideas for the actual implementation for these inserts, the adding and removes, the in queue, DQ, push, pops, can all be visualized with the images here. Uh, but let's go back. Link to Q. Yeah. Okay. Edge case. Well, there are a couple of peculiar scenarios. Because if I say in Q, look, in Q is really easy. All I have to do is go to the rear and say, hey, rear, uh, your next is the new node. And then rear, you now reference that new node. Cool. But what happens if there's nothing in this queue? What if front and rear are both referencing null? I can't just go say rear, uh, set your next to a new node because rear is null and you can't tell null to set its next to a new node. That's not a thing. You'll have a null pointer exception, a null reference, whatever it's called. So that's no good. So we need to deal with a kind of like a special case. And we're also going to need to worry about like, well, what if like there's only one thing in there where the front and rear are referencing the exact same node? We're going to have to be careful there. So we need to keep this in our mind when it comes to the implementation. These edge cases, we call them. You know, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's like, okay, add to the front, add to the rear. But, you know, there are these funny cases where like, well, what if it's empty? What if there's only one thing in it? So that's why we start often, especially when talking about collections, we often care about testing when it's empty and testing when it's singleton because that's where things can go funny. Anyways, let's talk about in queue. All right. So I am writing my class here. You know what? Let's go here and start writing. No, not this one, this one. I'm going to go in, nope, source. New Java class linked queue. Oh, I don't even have my queue here. So I better go here. I'm just going to go here. Copy and just paste it in here. Okay, yeah. Okay, so there, I've got my queue here and now I'm implementing my linked queue, which is going to be generic and it implements queue, which is generic. Great. So all I've done at this point is starting to tell, okay, I'm, I'm about to write a queue. But of course, this is angry because it's like, well, you haven't implemented any of the methods you need to implement for a queue. It's saying like, you need to write in queue, DQ first is empty in size. Well, I could just shut it up by saying, okay, well, implement them. They're skeletons at this point, right? There's nothing in there. So it just, this just makes IntelliJ stop whining. I need to actually go and implement them now, but I need to make sure I write my in queue, DQ first and is empty. Okay, so I've got my in queue here. You know what, no, why are we starting with in queue? We need to start with a constructor. All right, we need a constructor. Do I have an instructor in here? Constructor, DQ first. Okay, weirdly I do not. So whatever, let's go write our constructor. What do we need? Well. Uh, I'm going to need a private node of type T called front, a private node of type T called rear. Sometimes you see this as like head or tail, whatever. And then private int size is that. So these are the three fields I think we're going to need. If we go back to the start here, I say oh, a container, 
keep track of the front head and rear tail. Well, the container is the link stuff, and that's being managed by like the these references, right? And then we have size. So they, these are our three fields right here. So let's go, okay, uh, public, uh, linked, nope, linked queue. And what do we do? Well, whenever we create a new queue, its size should be zero. It's gonna start empty. Um, its front, well, if it's empty, should be nothing. And its rear, if it's empty, should be nothing as well. So there's our constructor. We are saying, whenever someone comes along and creates a new queue, it's going to be empty, and its front and rear are referencing nothing, because there's nothing to reference, because the queue is empty. So that's the constructor. Any questions about these fields and constructors before I jump into the in queue? Because I feel like I'm moving quickly, but no one's saying anything, so I, I assume you all understand, but I don't know, something makes me feel that might not be the case. Okay, uh, just remember, ask, ask, ask if you need help. Okay, great, there. So now we need our in queue. All right. First things first, let's, oh, I hear something. It's pretty straightforward to me at this point. Well, that's good. Okay, good. But if it's not to you, you're normal, because it's, you know, in the main difference, the reference to the rear. Uh, so far, but it's also the fact that we in queue at one end and DQ at the other, where with the link stack, it's all from one end, right? Um, but yeah. Uh, okay, so let's talk about in queuing without even looking at this, right? Like there's some extra fancy stuff going on here, but let's, let's look at this. First things first, I'm gonna need a node to hold on to the data that I'm in queuing into my queue. Because remember, element is the data I'm in queuing, but the data needs to go into a node that is then linked with other nodes. That's like the container for the queue. So a uh, node of type T to in queue equals new node with element in it. Okay, so this is the node I wanna add. And I know at the end, after I add, size should be plus plus, right? But here we're in a bit of a pickle, right? Because if it's, in general, if I'm in queuing, what I will say is rear dot set next to, to in queue. If we go here, that's like this, right? Here's rear, I made a new node that I wanna insert, and then I'm saying rear, set your next to that new node that we just created, okay, great. So now rear, this, this node with the reference to the black box, will reference the new node with the new element. But of course, now rear points to the thing before the last thing, so we need to update what rear reference is. So rear is going to be rear equals rear, get your next. So right there, and then rear equals rear dot, get next, great. You might also say, well, why not just say rear equals two in Q because two in Q is the node that we just in queued. And yeah, you're, you're totally right. But I don't know, I kind of like it like this. So this is the general case, but it's also possible that, like what if it's empty, right? If, if, if this is empty, then I can't, make, uh, I can't make two in Q, or I can't say rear, set your next. Okay, could you show the one above it for one second? I just wanna see how you did it again. One above what? Like this, or you mean the constructor? <clears throat> so, the, the constructor? Cause the, I mean, I'm at, I'm at the top right here. Is that what you meant? I'll assume it is. So, two in queue. Yeah. 
Two in Q, okay. So if rear is null, if it's empty, so I need to figure something out here. So if it's empty, if is empty, right? So I know we haven't finished is empty here. Let's finish that there. And then let's finish size. Okay, great. Okay, those are the easy ones. If it's empty, what do I do? Well, if it's empty, what I need to do is say, okay, rear, okay, no, for front equals two in Q and rear equals two in Q as well, right? Because, right, rear equals two in Q as well because front and rear, when there's only one thing in there, we need front and rear to reference the same one single thing. But if it's not empty, we need, we'll use this, right? We can say else, we can do this. And I think that would work, right? Let's think about this logic here. We create a new node, okay. Here, let's, uh, let's think about the two cases. We create a new node. Okay, great. Let's say it's not empty and I have, okay, this is front, this is rear. So it's not empty. Okay, so I go down here, rear equals set next to two in Q, okay. And then rear equals rear get next. Okay, rear, what's your next? Oh, it's a reference to this. So rear now points to that. And then size plus plus. Okay, that makes sense. Now let's think about the is empty scenario. I have the new node, but I have front and rear referencing nothing. Uh, there's nothing there. So if it's empty, front, okay. So front, you don't reference nothing anymore. You reference that. And then rear equals two in Q as well. Okay, so we don't reference that. And then there, and then either way we increase size. Okay, yeah, that checks out. So now this looks to capture the two cases. Because now, even if it's a singleton, it's not empty. So rear set your next to a new node and then update that. It should still work. So really, it looks like the only special case for our in queue is if it's empty. Now, we can clean this up a little bit, but before I do that, let's, uh, let's see if there's any questions about how the hell I just did all that. <clears throat> All right, well, if you have a question, throw it in the chat. Oh, I hear a boop. Can you show the constructor for a moment again? <laughs> okay. It's just that, if you're having a hard, like you're thinking too hard, just what's it need to be? Okay, size is zero, front and rear start is null. That's all. Okay, so here's our in queue. We can actually clean this up a little bit. Cause remember a moment ago I said, Ah, you know, we can do this. Because two in Q would be the thing we just added. So rear dot get next and in Q are two in Q are aliases. They both reference the exact same thing. So this is a valid line of code. Just checking the link structure goes from rear to the front. Well, I'm not sure what, okay. So that's, you, that might, I don't know, that's a little ambiguous to me. What it is is when you add something, it goes to the rear. When you DQ something, it comes from the front. Hopefully that gets it to you. And like, look here, right? So when we in something, it would go here. And then when we remove something, DQ, it comes from this, this part. Okay, cool. So I changed this code back to, you know, to this. And then you might notice, well, this line of code and this line of code are, are the same. So you know what, let's get fancy and just you know, take this out. And then we don't need that anymore. And 
Ah, oh, look at that. Isn't that nice? So that's nice. <laughs> In fact, you might even get even fancier. By doing something like this, but I don't know. I don't really like this. Yeah, this is totally valid where you just have it all in one line Which people like to do if it's like a really simple little Like there's not a lot going on in that if statement. It's like it's a one-liner great But I don't know uh, personally. I kind of like this because it helps me see um, The all the difference Nope it helps me see what's and where a little bit better. To me, this is a little more readable. You can, but only if it's like one line of code. I don't recommend it. It's, it ends up being a recipe for disaster. And like, if you need to go back and add more lines, then you're like, oh, I gotta add the braces back. Yeah. All right, so there's our in queue. So now our DQ is just Okay, let's think about this now. So, our DQ. Okay, you know what? We're gonna wanna do that thing like, okay, if is empty, throw new, no such element exception. Bad, I don't know. <laughs> this is really lazy. Empty Q. There. No, all right. Yeah, DQing from an empty queue. So if it's empty, we can't do anything. And you know what? Let's go down here and change that for the first as well. Because that's our, like, okay, we can't first, firsting from an empty queue. Okay. So, you know what? First is going to be easier. First is just return front. Because if it's not empty, front isn't null. So front equal, no, front dot get data. There, that's first. Hey front, I know you're not null because you're not empty. So just give me your data and then immediately return it. There, it gives us a reference to the data in the front of the queue. So now here, it's gonna be like that, but okay, t2 return equals front dot get data. Okay. And then we're gonna wanna return to return. And we're gonna want size minus minus. But now, okay, what, what needs to happen here? We have, gotta keep an eye on the time. Where is my clock? Oof. Front, get your data. So now I wanna say, okay, front, front equals front dot get next. So front equals front dot get next. That makes sense, right? Because this is just removing from the front of a link structure. And let's think about this. If front's next is not null, well, front just references the subsequent node. If front's next is null, well, that's fine because front will now reference null, which should be the case when it's empty. So that's good. But we have a funny little situation here because if we don't update what rear reference is, cause like what if, what if front and rear, what if there's one thing in there and I just dequeued it so now it's an empty queue. But when there's only one thing in there, we have front and rear referencing the exact same node. If we update what front reference is to be null, but not what rear reference is, rear will be this like dangling reference to a node that was dequeued. But if I go to in queue, I might say, okay, rear equals rear dot set next, but that node that I'm just updating shouldn't be in the queue. It's a whole thing. We'll revisit this uh, tomorrow's lecture, but just to finish this off, I can say, okay, if is empty now, if it's empty now, I can do like, okay, rear, nope, equals null as well. Yeah, or I can say rear equals front because they should both be null. And if we go back here, so there's our in queue. There's our DQ. Yeah, look at that. It's basically the same. I just, okay, the size was after. Cool. And then that's it for the whole queue. That's it. 
All right, we'll end here, but uh, don't worry. Tomorrow I'm going to go over the DQ again, and we'll talk about this. And I'll draw it out, but yeah, uh, that's that. Any questions before we wrap up for the day? Of course, we're over time. If you got to leave, leave. But if you have a question, see if we can get it answered real quick. All right, seeing nothing, I will, okay. <laughs>